Good morning dear students. I hope you all are fine. Today we are going to start our fifth chapter that is different kinds of materials. So in this chapter we will study about those kind of materials which we are dealing in our daily life and we will categorize those things into two types that is acid and bases. And third one is neutral substance which do not possess any character like acids and bases and then the indicators. Now what is the meaning of word indicator? Indicator means to say the thing which indicates about something. So the indicator will indicate about the nature of a particular substance that whether it is an acid or whether it is a base. So Indicators will be used for these purposes for distinguishing between acids and bases. Then comes a testing solution of common substances means we will make uh, these uh, indicators, prepare the solution of these indicators and use them for testing the different substances that are around us. So let us start reading portion now. So before starting our chapter, they have given you three definitions in these purple boxes. First one is atom. The smallest particle of an atom that, that take place in chemical reaction, take parts in chemical reaction is called an atom. So what is atom? In simple language, uh, try to understand uh, students. What is atom? The smallest part or the smallest particle of anything. For example, just consider the example of a chalk, of a chalk. So, if you uh, start crushing the chalk, you will obtain a fine powder. And if you just pick up one particle of that powder, you may call that as a smallest particle of that chalk. Actually, that is not a smallest particle that you can't call even that small particle as an atom because that small particle is containing a lot many uh, number of atoms you can see. So, atom is basically a microscopic particle that is not visible to the naked eye. We can't see atoms like this. We can uh, see atoms under specific microscopes, under very, you can say, precise microscopes only. And you may just, uh, to uh, let you understand, I have given you the example of chalk. So, if even if you are having a finely divided, uh, divided powdered chalk, the smallest particle of that chalk also contains thousands or lakhs of atoms. So, you can suppose how small an atom is actually. So, what is atom? Atom is the smallest particle of an element. Element means to say that particular thing, whether that thing is made up of carbon or oxygen or whatever is the matter. So, of that element, the smallest particle is called an atom and this is the basic thing that part take parts in a chemical reaction that you will be able to understand in your higher classes. For the time being, what is atom? Atom is the smallest particle of any element. That is a microscopic particle, not a not even visible to a naked eye. So then comes your element. Now what is element? All the things are made up of certain things and the basic consequent of that thing, that particular thing is called element. For example, your coal is made up of carbon. And the things that we used uh, like iron, iron is also an element, calcium is also an element. So these kind of things, those results in the formation of different kind of things are called, you can say, elements. Then comes your chemical compounds. Now, when two, three atoms combine, two, three different kinds of atom combine, means one atom of oxygen and one uh, two atoms of hydrogen combine, they will form a molecule. And that molecule you may call that as an compound, chemical compound. Compound means to say that is a mixture of something. So chemical compound, chemical compound means mixture of two or more atoms. They form a molecule or you may call that as a chemical compound. For example, your water. Water is not an element. Water is not an atom. Water is a compound. Why? Because it contains, you may have heard the chemical formula of water that is H2O. So what is this? H2O, H2O uh, is a molecule or you can call it as a compound. Why? Because it contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. 
so this is about your chemical compound so now just start let us start reading our reading portion every day you use various kind of substances like uh, food medicine fuel clothes etc and all these are chemical substances that is these are made up of atoms as i have already told you what is atom atom is the smallest particle of anything i have given you the example of chalk so you may take the example of wood iron or anything all these things are made up of atoms and number of substance you consume such as lemon curd tamarind then fruit juice common salt sugar vinegar have all different tastes you may uh, might have noticed all these things that all the lemon juice have different taste if you have a salt solution that will be of a different taste if you have a sugar syrup that is of a different taste so all these things are having different taste and you may classify these tastes as sour bitter or you can say tasteless or salty so you may classify them as this so earlier we are classifying them like this but today from today onwards you may classify those as acids or bases now uh, coming to your next paragraph moving to your next paragraph that is acid substances or acids so what are acids first of all so if you uh, remember the taste of vinegar that is called sirka in punjabi or curd or lemon juice you might have noticed that all those things are sour in taste wo khatte hote hain sabhi so the substance which are having sour taste those are called acids and basically the word acid is derived from a latin word which is acre latin word acre is uh, you can say modified form of uh, you can say acid is the modified form of the latin word acre which means sour in taste so in latin uh, the word acre means sour so that is why acid is derived from that latin word that is acre so acetic acid present in vinegar lactic acid present in milk and citric acid present in lemon juice so all these acids make a substance acidic in nature the substance which contain acid the sub that is called acidic substance or having acidic nature so any kind of sour taste thing like your lemon juice your amlas any kind of citrus fruit like lemon oranges all these things contain some kind of acid and they all are sour in taste and that is why they are categorized as acids so main characteristic of acid is that they are sour in taste so moving to the next page now so here in this table 5.1 they have given you some substances that you come across in our daily life so we come across these things in our daily life so they have given you the particular acid present in that thing so first one is vinegar and vinegar vinegar is a sirka that is used for making pickles etc so vinegar uh, having uh, is having acetic acid then your all the citrus fruits like amla and your lemon oranges these contain ascorbic acid which is also known as vitamin c so citrus may they may contain citric acid also and ascorbic acid also both acids are present in all the citrus fruits like uh, lemon oranges amla etc then comes your formic acid and this this acid is present in ant stings or in honey bee stings Uh, stings means to say uh, the teeth with the uh, with that they bite when a little ant bites you it uh, it become itching on your skin so that is because they are having acetic as a uh, formic acid in their stings that is why uh, that acid cause itching at that particular place of your skin then comes your lactic acid so this is present in curd actually so when your milk becomes sour it 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 get converted into curd and curd contain lactic acid then hydrochloric acid which is also a very dangerous acid also but it is present inside our stomach so you may wonder that how this acid is present in our stomach actually our stomach cells uh, get repaired uh, within you can say nanoseconds they are replaced 
with new ones within nanoseconds so that is why our stomach is containing this acid this is very important acid for digestion process also without this digestion is not possible and if you have uh, heard about this this is uh, also used as toilet cleaners etc and those things also because it is of a very high acidic strength and even then it is naturally present in our stomach also so uh, this is uh, basically the working of uh, hydrochloric acid inside our body is the digestion of our food then comes your malic acid it is present in apple then oxalic acid present in spanish means to say palak mein hota hai then tannic acid in tea and tartaric acid in your grapes then tamarind means to say imli mein so all these acids different acids are present in different substances you have to just uh, learn these acids and the substance in which they are present then comes your bases now we have done with the definition of acid and lot many examples of acids also so acids were those things which are having so taste now the second category is bases so if you might have tasted baking soda or if you not have uh, yet tasted any kind of baking soda so just taste that baking soda and you will find that is of a bitter taste actually so this that is not acid nature it means acids are sour because so it is having a different taste and if you take a little amount of baking soda in your hand after some time it will become soapy in nature soapy in touch so the things that are soapy in touch and bitter in taste those things are called your basic substances or bases so the chemical substances which are bitter in taste and soapy to touch are called bases and the chemical nature is called basic nature so here in below table 5.2 they have given you some bases and where you can find those bases so for example your sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide they are found in soaps ammonium hydroxide in the uh, you can say thinners that are used for cleansing your glasses or window glasses or any table chairs made up of glass then calcium hydroxide that is your lime water magnesium hydroxide milk of magnesia which is used as an antacid to remove the you can say excess amount of acid present in our stomach sometimes we feel that um, our stomach is more acidic or we feel acidity actually so that acidity is because of the presence of more amount of or excess amount of hydrochloric acid which is naturally present in our stomach and to neutralize that acid to overcome that acidity we may intake milk of magnesia which is a base because it neutralizes acids we will learn how so just for the time being just remember that milk of magnesia is taken as an antacid to remove the excess acidic uh, excess acid that is hcl a hydrochloric acid from our stomach so moving to the next page now then comes your indicators now what are indicators as i have already told you the substance which indicate about something that is called indicator and what uh, what here it is indicating it is indicating about the nature of a particular substance whether it is a acid or a base so so uh, why we need indicators because we are unable to eat or you can say touch everything we can't uh, eat anything to touch, just judge whether it is a of a sour taste or bitter taste whether it is an acid or a base so you can't eat anything or like that or you can't even touch those things because this is a highly corrosive etc uh, corrosive in nature so to judge those things to determine whether a particular thing is an acid or it is a base so we need indicators now indicator can be a natural indicator also that can be obtained from natural sources like your plants or, and all those things and it can be synthetic also synthetic or artificial or man made so that is is prepared in labs and laboratories so here we will discuss about the natural indicators only in detail so i will tell you about the natural and 
मैन मेड और सिंथेटिक इंडिकेटर्स सो इंडिकेटर्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वाट आर इंडिकेटर्स इंडिकेटर्स आर सब्सटांस दैट आर यूज टू टेस्ट द एसिडिक एंड द बेसिक नेचर ऑफ द सब्सटांस वी विल जस्ट एड सम अमाउंट ऑफ इंडिकेटर इन टू अ पर्टिकुलर सब्सटांस एंड जस्ट दैन वी विल ऑब्जर्व द चेंज इन द कलर ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर सब्सटांस दैन वी विल डिसाइड वेदर इट इज एन एसिड और बेस दैट वी विल लर्न वन बाय वन फ्रॉम दिस पेज ऑनवर्ड्स एंड जस्ट हेयर द डेफिनेशन ऑफ इंडिकेटर इज दैट इंडिकेटर आर द सब्सटांसिस इंडिकेटर्स आर द सब्सटांसिस दैट आर यूज टू टेस्ट द एसिडिक और द बेसिक नेचर ऑफ अ सब्सटांस सो दे हैव गिवन यू द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ यू कैन से नेचुरल इंडिकेटर्स विच आर अकरिंग इन नेचर फर्स्ट वन इज लिटमस दैन इज टर्मरिक पाउडर दैन इज चाइना रोज पेटल्स सो लिटमस यू कैन से लिटमस इज अ सोल्यूशन ऑल्सो कैन बी यूज एज अ सोल्यूशन ऑल्सो और लिटमस पेपर इज ऑल्सो अवेलेबल इन आर लैब ऑल्सो इट इज अवेलेबल सो लिटमस इज ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम अ पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ प्लांट दैट इज कॉल्ड लाइकन दे हैव गिवन यू पिक्चर ऑफ लाइकन ऑल्सो इन फाइव पॉइंट थ्री फिगर सो लाइकन्स आर पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ प्लांट विच आर यू कैन से हैविंग एलगी एंड फंजाए कॉम्बिनेशन Lichens are having algae and fungi as a combination, and they are of different kind of a plant. You can say, and we obtain a solution from those which is called litmus, and this litmus solution is used to distinguish between acid and basic uh, nature of any particular substance. And then they have shown you the uh, real picture of litmus paper in Figure five point four. So these are uh, present in our lab whenever the school will reopen. Uh, i will show you these litmus papers and we will definitely test the different substance using these uh, litmus papers whether those substance are acidic or basic in nature for the time being just uh, just check the color of these things that litmus paper exists in two colors one is blue and another one is red so and then comes your uh, turmeric turmeric as you all know haldi ko bolte hain so turmeric is available at your home also then comes your china rose now what is china rose uh, it is hibiscus actually normally common name is hibiscus i will show you a flower of this plant on the next page and then comes your two uh, you can say industrially prepared or synthetically prepared indicator that is phenolphthalein and methyl orange so now just let us study about litmus so litmus is most commonly used indicator and it is obtained from a plant lichen as i have already told you in distilled water it is of purple color if you are having distilled water distilled means to say boiled water which is having no impurity pure water in pure water it is having a purple color and if you add it in a acidic medium blue paper into acidic solution it will change into red and if you add uh, into a basic solution red colored a uh, litmus paper into a basic solution it will turn into a blue colored paper so these things uh, happens actually we will show you later on but you have to remember this is very important so you have to remember about these things with that uh, acid changes which color to which and basis changes which color to which so it may be quite confusing for you also so just remember about one thing that acid change blue litmus paper into red and base changes vice versa opposite of that so just remember about one thing that acid acid means to say dangerous something so it is associated with red color because red is also used to show the danger so what it should do acid just changes blue litmus into red color so just remember about this thing and base does opposite of this so generally two type of litmus paper red and blue are available and they are form they are in paper form as i have shown you in figure also and they are in solution form also so then you have to perform an activity is given on this page 5.1 and you can't perform this activity at home because you need to have you can say litmus papers with you or litmus solution so that is not uh, available at your home so we will do this activity when you come back and they have given you uh, on the next page lemon juice they have added it in the uh, red litmus paper effect on the red red will remain red because it is already acid and when a blue is poured into lemon juice because lemon juice is acidic in nature we have already studied now so it will change the blue litmus into red so it means lemons contain acid so in this way we will uh, justify or we will judge the nature of all the substance they have given in this table that we will perform 
this and this experiment in our lab whenever the school reopens so for the time being just remember one thing which is very important that the litmus paper the blue color litmus paper changes its color to red when it is dipped into acidic solution and vice versa for base it is opposite in base it changes its red color into blue so just remember about this one so next they have given you there are certain substance which remains uh, red and blue uh, means in which the litmus paper remains as red and blue as it is it does not changes its color there exist some substance in which litmus paper do not change its color so those substance are called neutral substance means neither they are acidic nor they are basic they are not having acidic nature that is why they are not uh, you can say changing the blue color into red and they are not also not having uh, basic nature that is why they are not capable of changing red litmus into blue one so they are neutral substance they are neither acidic nor basic in nature they are neutral and what are neutral substance examples of neutral substance one is your water your sugar solution salt solution your uh, alcohol all these things are neutral in nature they do not change the color of litmus paper if it is blue it will remain as blue if it is of red color it will be of red color even after even if you are pouring that litmus paper uh, for several hours so it will remain as it is so there are some substances which do not change color of litmus paper that are called neutral substances they are neither acidic nor basic so this is all about here litmus paper so we will continue the next one in the next part of this video so thanks for listening